Yes, welcome to another episode of Stop Crying Posure, the greatest podcast known to man. Who do we have here live in the chat? I and O, Mighty Morphing, Zol, Lysy Miller, Lysy, Lacey, Jaunt, 8 Bit Ranger, Varial Reality, No Nino, Buttsbot, <laughs> Rock Billy, TJ, and uh, Stoned Assassin, and more. Hope you guys are ready for a boring podcast. I'm not at all in the mood to uh, be podcasting today. It's been a rough last night and a pretty rough morning, but uh, the show must go on. And as always, we are going to start with the news. And for once, we have skateboarding news, thanks to someone in the chat. I had no idea this was going on, but the DA drops case against USA Skateboarding's Neil Hendricks. USA Skateboarding. So that has something to do with the Olympics, maybe? The Orange County District Attorney is declining to pursue a case against USA Skateboarding Executive Committee member Neil Hendricks after allegations of improper sexual conduct with a then 14-year-old skateboarder. Now, if this is true, fuck this guy. But I do appreciate that Orange County is at least doing this... uh, This thing we used to hear a lot on cops. You're innocent until proven guilty. And a lot of the times with these like rape cases or improper sexual conduct cases, a lot of times it seems like the guy is guilty until proven innocent. And we've seen this double standard. Every time it comes up that like a school teacher fondles a kid or whatever, we have this huge double standard. And I think it applies here. But... um. Hopefully, this guy is actually not guilty because if he is, again, fuck that guy. It's terrible. The case has been rejected as it could not be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Michelle Vanderlinen, a spokeswoman for the district attorney, said Friday in a statement emailed to ESPNW. So this news is about a week old. I didn't hear about it, but I do remember this coming up a couple weeks earlier. Professional skateboarder Julie Lynn Kinstred Nelson, whoa, a lot of names there, 25 years old, who goes by Jules Lynn, provided the Costa Mesa, California Police Department with a six-page letter on October 11th describing allegations, excuse me, alleged alleged interactions (laughs) with Hendrix. I can't read today, guys. The letter also provided, TSPN states that, when Kinstrand Nel- can we just say Jules was between the ages of 14 and 15 and Hendrix was in his early 30s she performed sex acts on him at his request uh, it also says i uh, took videos of her while she was naked and showed her pornography involving underage girls so i don't think this chick would just randomly make shit up but i also don't know what their relationship was maybe they were cool maybe she's not allowed in the olympics and this is going to be like her get back because i've definitely and i don't want to say that this happened i don't want to say this happened with her but i've seen this happen with one of my close friends they went outside this happened actually only two years ago they went outside the house that i was at drinking i was playing video games i went out too because they were fucking yelling and i sat there and i watched them argue Because, you know, I'm fucking got my little beer and my popcorn and shit. I'm ready just watching people argue, whatever. So, here's what happened. Um, The chick hit the guy. The guy said, "Uh, fuck it, I'm just going to go to sleep then. And because the guy didn't um, entertain the fight anymore, he just decided to walk away. The chick then ran up to me. You know, she was drunk and said, did you see him hit me? And it was really crazy to me because I was like, listen, you know I was watching the entire time. You guys know you were arguing 20 feet away from me and you hit him, right? Did you see him hit me? Like, uh, I was, I've been here the whole time. That shit might work on a cop because maybe he showed up late and didn't see it. But I was sitting here staring at you guys in plain view the entire time. And the chick still tried to pull that. And I'm not saying that that applies here. I'm just saying that that's something I've witnessed firsthand. So I really appreciate the whole innocent until proven guilty. Then again, you know, I don't want you guys to take me out of context like you always fucking do. If this guy did what they're accusing, then he's a fucking scumbag. But 
as far as you guys know, the chat, the viewers, and me, we don't know any better. In an email sent to the Wall Street Journal last month, Hendricks said the claims are 100% false. Police passed the results of their investigation to the district attorney. Hendricks was placed on an interim suspension by USA Skateboarding. After the allegations, the U.S. Center for Safe Sport also placed Hendricks on interim suspension on October 19th for allegations of misconduct. I haven't received any notification, um, Jules told ESPN. I'm very surprised. I would like to hear from them myself why they made this decision. My next step is waiting to hear from the detective of district attorney's office. Until then, it's not real. So she's saying that uh, she's probably going to pursue this more, I guess. A spokeswoman for Safe Sports said that it's the center's policy not to comment on specific cases. Blah, 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 blah. Paralympic. Uh, alleged conduct may be. Okay, listen to this. Actually, I said blah, 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 but I'm going to go ahead and read this. According to Safe Sports Code for the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Movement, alleged conduct may be a violation even if the responding party is not charged, prosecuted, or convicted for the behavior that constitutes a potential violation of the code, is acquitted of a criminal charge, or legal authorities decline to prosecute. So basically what that means, if you guys have trouble reading my broken fucking sentences, uh, the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic group can suspend you even if you're proven innocent. So, thank God our justice system doesn't look at it like that. And to be devil's advocate, if this chick Jules, if, let's just pretend, if she's exaggerating or something, this would be a perfect way to get back at someone. Now, that would be a terrible thing. You know, again, I don't want you guys to take me out of, con like, out of context, but when you have a code like that, Basically, it's just anyone can get you fired for anything, right? Can you imagine if you could send someone to jail for anything, anytime? Just go, yeah, the that person raped me. Oh, well, they're in jail. Wait a minute. Like, I have an alibi. I was clearly on video at the convenience store. Or, like, clearly I'm live on Twitch. Clearly, there's, like, overwhelming proof that this didn't happen. Doesn't matter. You're out of here. So, <laughs> a spokeswoman from USA Skateboarding said the organization stands behind its statements from October 24th when it said it was fully cooperating with Safe Sports Investigation. Now, to say this shit, you know, <laughs> I really have to tiptoe over this because I can easily be, be called a victim blamer or something. Almost whenever you, like, have doubts or suspicions, it's almost like anyone can just say, oh, so you're saying she's a liar? It's like, no, I'm not saying she's a liar. I'm saying I don't know the truth. I'm just looking at it from all angles, which is what everyone should do, in my opinion. Hendricks has been an integral figure in skateboarding's entry into the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. The pro skateboarder who won multiple X Games medals in vert skateboarding in the late 90s and 2000s is the worldwide brand manager for action sports and gymnastics company Camp Woodward which is owned by Powder Corp. Oh, I think I remember reading that some of this shit happened at Woodward. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. Actually, I do remember reading something like that because one of the Woodward guys said uh, on Facebook, I'm friends with some of the Woodward guys on Facebook, they said uh, basically the same thing that was said earlier. They said, even if this is true or even if it's not true, I'm not fucking with this guy ever again. And my thing is like, y what? You You know this guy in real life. Like, my thing is like, if anyone ever said that shit about me, if their immediate thing they put on Facebook was, uh, yeah, Steve, uh, Ninja Lifestyle got accused of rape or something, I'm never fucking with that guy again. Even if, even if it's not true, I'm never fucking with him again. I'd rather have my friends say, uh, something like, yeah, I don't think he would ever do that. Like, I'd rather my friends do that shit. <laughs> my friends be like, yeah, Steve doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would do that, so, uh, I guess I'll just kind of wait and see how this investigation goes because this doesn't really make sense to me. I feel like that'd be the way to do it. But if you do that, people suddenly do this whole like, oh, so you think she's a liar. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. 
Oh, man. On his LinkedIn profile, Hendricks lists himself as professional photographer and color commentator for Vans Park Series. So this guy, even though proven innocent right now, case was dropped, career's probably over. Probably, or at least cut in half. He's also worked as a skateboard broadcast commentator for NBC, ESPN, Red Bull, and CBS Sports Network. That being said, if you guys are kicking this guy out, you need a new commentator? Hey, how's it going? What's up? Steve here. Oh, what a brilliant kickflip back tail. The hard thing about kickflip back tails is sometimes you can't see. It's almost like a blind trick. And the way that Chaz Ortiz pulled it off, he actually came out regular Whereas Nigel Houston chooses to come out fakie, which means backwards, some people would uh, disagree as to one being harder than the other. Hello? I just made up that entire thing right now, but I sounded like a commentator. Did I not? Thank you. According to the spokeswoman for the district attorney, the standard for filing a case is that the evidence will support the charge or charges can be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. She said the office is not able to comment further because the case was rejected. Um, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this because maybe I'm looking at it, um, I feel like I'm looking at it more openly than most people would, but I'm wondering if maybe I'm missing a piece of the puzzle also. I know, says, what are the odds I drop an F-bomb? I can turn that shit on and off. I can turn that stuff on and off. See? I did it right there. I gave you guys the clean version and the dirty version. <laughs> um... People say that shit all the time, like, oh, man, like, what would you do in a professional setting? And then I say, oh, yeah, well, I've had a job my entire life. You guys think when I repaired slot machines, I would go up to a, a client and be like, yeah, your fucking game's broken, dude. I don't know how to how the shit to fix it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it would never happen like that. I was like, okay, what's the problem? You know, I had a lot of people that were upset. And it wasn't like random customers. It's like people that are paying our company sometimes thousands of dollars every two weeks and it's like okay i have to be professional i can do that i can pull it off throw me a polo shirt on ino says it's the issue with these cases it's very difficult to review evidence but if there's no evidence to prove you did a crime why should they be punished i agree chic ninja says i had to argue with like five other women that the same thing not guilty until proven innocent yeah you can't be guilty until proven innocent. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky situation, right? These things, because like I said earlier, you know, if you show even the slightest bit of doubt, everyone goes, oh, wow, you think she's a liar. And it's like, no, I don't think she's a liar. I just think that this is a crime. You know, there's a, a lot at stake here. And I also think that, you know, what she's, this is nine years ago. It, I don't want to make this sound fishy, but I, I think it's strange that, you know, nine years later, now you want to, uh, you know, press charges. And I'm not saying that that, I'm not saying that that makes her a liar either, but I'm saying I want to hear more. I want to know more details, I guess. Um, my thing is, you know, a talk that I hope to have with my future son or daughter is, hey, if you're at skate camp and uh, somebody tells you to suck their dick or if, if, uh, if a chick fucking shoves her pussy in your face or something like that, I want to know about that shit when you get back home or call me, let me know. So we can get this shit fucking figured out. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's the shit I would hope to teach my kids. Um, this nine years later thing is, is yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just strange to me. I would just uh, like to hear more details, I suppose. Um, and I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't think I'm being unreasonable. So TJ said, that's bullshit. Someone can get penalized for an accusation you've been proven innocent for. Yeah, that's... Um, I mean, that's, <laughs> I did security one day. I got another story for you of, uh, and again, I don't want to apply this story to what we're reading right now, but this is a real story from when I worked event security. I was at a, I think the guy's name is George Thorogood. It was the guy that sang bad to the bone and I was doing security for him and I was in the front row and, uh, the, the rules for this venue. Okay. That guy's like a thousand years old old as shit you know what i mean half of his songs he performed like sitting down so he's old as shit so the policy for this venue was no one could could approach the stage and dance you know what i mean it's weird i know i didn't make the fucking rules actually the performer and his team made those rules so you can't go up there and fucking rush the stage it's not like a uh you know a, a punk rock show where you can jump on stage for a minute and maybe they'll shove you back back out 
or whatever, you know, it's not system of a down or, uh, you know, anything like that. So, um, anyways, this chick was, uh, trying to get out. I told her multiple times, Hey, listen, you got it. You can't fucking approach the stage, you know? And sh her husband was there and he was a cop. So the whole time he, he was trying to calm her down, but they were getting drunker and drunker. And eventually I had to fucking radio up. I was like, Hey, these guys are, are really eyeballing me and they're about to like, we need to switch another person in because they've created a grudge. Me and this group of people have created a grudge, so we need to switch another security guard in so we can do this kind of like good cop, bad cop thing so they can go, oh, yeah, like the new security guard will be like, oh, yeah, that guy, dude, yeah, he's a total dick. Out. But I'm here now. I'm going to take care of you guys so that you can, you know, de-escalate the situation. Anyways, situation got super fucking escalated and uh, in a casino. This event was in a casino, so I want you guys to know uh, there's hundreds of cameras everywhere. Everywhere there's cameras in every fucking room. So uh, as I was walking away from the situation, the chick said, that guy just grabbed my boobs and pointed at uh, one of our supervisors or something who wasn't even like near. He wasn't even close. So again, another situation where I saw everything and the chick said, that guy grabbed my boobs. And of course, the husband's like, what? Somebody grabbed your tits? And then it becomes all this shit. And she's like, somebody grab the boobs. And, you know, like I, I stepped right back in there. Like, as I was walking away, I turned around, and I was like, I was like, you know, there's cameras everywhere. Everywhere in this room, there's cameras. So if that happened, you'll be able to find it on camera. And I said that shit real slick-like, you know, because I was, because I knew that shit didn't happen. And I was like, so, yeah, if that happened, you guys are going to have to review the, the tapes. So you guys are going to have to stick around after this concert and review the tapes and find out. We're, we're going to find out who grabbed your tits. We're going to find out. And uh, then, of course, it became like, oh, we don't have to do all that. All We just want our tickets refunded. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. No, no, ma'am. If someone grabbed you inappropriately, we need to get to the bottom of this. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't get to say all that because I was I was on the bottom of the, the totem pole as far as that shit went. In fact, they told me to just leave. I was like, oh, just go ahead, get out of here. You're off early. And I was like, cool. But what a coincidence that once it became, oh, we're about to prove this. Like, there's cameras everywhere. We're going to see if your story's true. Then it became, oh, no, 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 no. I do, we'll just take it. We'll, we'll just want a refund. We don't need to go check the cameras. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. Because if it was my kid or my bitch or, or anyone in, involved, in, if somebody grabbed my fucking dick and I was really annoyed about it, I'd be like, yeah, let's get on those fucking kids. Let's, wh what are we doing? Wasting time talking. Let's get on the cameras right now. And of course, in this situation, which I saw the woman to be a liar, of course, you know, it, it went that way. Again, I'm going to be a broken record here. I'm not applying that to this article, but I am applying the idea of uh, innocent until proven guilty is a valuable thing. And that shit doesn't exist all over the world, right? I mean, it barely exists here, to be honest with you guys. But yeah, so that was uh, that was the show. This all happened during the song "Bad to the Bone." He saved that song for last. <laughs> Bad to the bone. Yeah, it was great. Good times. Now, every time I go to that casino, actually, there's it's right next to a bowling alley. So right when I go into the bowling alley, I look down that hallway, and I'm like, damn, that's that's where that shit happened. So anyways, next news article. Toy grenade causes Black Friday shoppers to evacuate Indiana store. We're 20 minutes into this and all we've talked about is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Black Friday excitement briefly turned into panic after a customer at a northwestern Indiana store mistook a toy grenade for a real one. Oh man, the ATF, uh, whatever it was called shortly after... Shoppers and employers were evacuated until authorities determined the toy grenade posed no threat. The store later reopened. Here's my thing. If the grenade doesn't go off in the first minute or so, I feel like, uh, I feel like that's when you call. That's when you call the ATF. That's when you call the FBI. That's when you call SWAT, right? Like, like call, like, or, or excuse me, that's when you don't call them. You go, oh, wow, a grenade didn't go off. I've been staring at it for the last two or three minutes. Hey, hold that phone. Hey, tell them. Tell them it's all good. Hey, nope. I'll, give me the phone. Give, give me the phone. Hello, ATF. Yeah, we we fucked up, dude. You, okay, if you... No, nah, it was our fault. No. Nah. No, nah, I understand we said it was a grenade. I understand. No. No. Okay, here's the thing. It's Black Friday. Somebody really wanted a... No, listen. No, you listen to me. Somebody really wanted a flat screen, FBI, and uh, they threw a grenade. It happens. It didn't explode. It's a toy grenade. I'll handle it. I'll handle... 
Okay, you get well you just send a couple guys. We don't need we don't need everybody. <laughs> you guys like that phone call. <laughs> you guys like that improv action. <laughs> Oh, man, I feel like, yeah, if the grenade doesn't go off <laughs> in the first minute or so, just fucking go check it out, dude. I'll check it out. Fuck it. I've seen fucking Hurt Locker. I'm checking that shit out, dude. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Shoppers and employee. Okay. Uh, Mike said he and his family were checking out when an employee told him that another customer dropped a grenade in the back of the store. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine how that fucking that conversation went? It's like, okay, that's gonna be a uh, oh, nice and good deal today. You got a you got a PlayStation Four for two hundred bucks, and uh, oh, a flat screen for three hundred fifty dollars, forty two inch. Nice. Oh, a smart TV. Nice, nice. Oh, oh, actually, hold on. No, actually, I can't check you out right now. Someone dropped a grenade. We got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, Josh Beckler, Casey's Casey's brother, Josh. Says he, quote, left a cart full of stuff. <laughs> okay, here's my thing, too. They got a grenade out there? I'm taking all my shit. I'm taking it and running, man. I'm looting that bitch. I'm going to grab a SNES Classic. Because that shit's probably on sale. It used to be 80 bucks. Black Friday, they probably got that shit for like 50 bucks, man. I'm missing Black Friday for this, by the way, guys. I'm missing Black Friday to entertain you guys. You guys are missing it, too. Although, I think Sheik said it earlier. Sheik Ninja 420. He said he was in Walmart as the show started so if you guys didn't know this you can watch the podcast live and get great black friday deals and guess what else guess what else is going on um you get you get grade a news you get news while you shop basically you're gonna be dead someday and you're gonna want to multitask as many things as you want i think about it all the time when i'm waiting at a red light if i'm waiting at a red light and i see nobody to the right Nobody to the left. Sometimes I'll just run that bitch. You want to know why? Because I don't want to die knowing that I spent an extra year of my life waiting at red lights. So what I'm saying is, feel free to go shopping. Listen to the podcast at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It's like those things they used to do. Remember when, uh, <laughs> there's actually an episode of, oh man, we're going to go off on a real tangent here. There's an episode of Dexter's Lab where he goes to sleep and he, and he listens to like a, a how to speak French fucking cassette. And then for the whole day, all he can say is "omelette du fromage," "omelette du fromage," "omelette du fromage." If you guys haven't seen that, it's a great fucking episode. Also, it's become a meme. That's a really popular meme now. If anyone's seen the Dexter's Lab meme, it comes from that episode. If no one, uh, <laughs> if no one knew that, yeah, food for thought. I'm old. I've been watching that shit for a long time. Um. Also, you guys are getting great tips on how to uh, steal shit from stores. Just take a fake grenade. Next article. Six-year-old girl allegedly killed baby brother while dad shopped. I did not read this. I did not hear about this. It's in Texas. What the hell is going on here? Police have charged. <laughs> did, you <laughs> did you guys see last week's thumbnail of Stop Crying Poser? I took that guy with the big fat neck and superimposed it onto my face. <laughs> and I put these blue headphones on his face. <laughs> we should do that every week. Every week where we get like a weird mug shot, we should do that. I should take Neil Hendrick's face, or maybe just this guy, and just put it. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, <laughs> uh, I forgot. I was going to. I don't know if I put that on Instagram or not, but it was a really funny picture. <laughs> Dead meme already, but that guy had a big fat neck. Okay, here we go. Police have charged a Houston man with child abandonment after concluding that his six-year-old daughter strangled her one-year-old brother with a seatbelt in the family car parked outside a thrift store while their father shopped. Now, okay. Okay, I'm going to read the article, then I'm going to give you guys my thoughts because I think this is going to be fucked up. Adrian Dreshawn Middleton was charged Friday in the May 20th incident on the eastern edge of Houston. A criminal complaint says the 26-year-old father told investigators that he parked outside a thrift store, left the air conditioner on, gave the children water and a snack, and played a movie while he went into the store to shop for clothes. Surveillance showed Middleton was in the store for almost one and a half hours before returning and noticing his daughter crying 
in the back seat. The child told investigators that she was playing with her brother and got angry when he wouldn't stop crying. She said she wrapped the seatbelt around her brother's neck and thought he had fallen asleep. No arrest has been made. Now, okay, two things. Number one, what the fuck are you doing shopping for an hour and a half? Okay, that's a red flag. It's suspicious. It makes me think maybe this guy's twacked out. Who shops for an hour and a half? Look at the picture of the thrift store. It's like a dollar store. Are you real? An hour and a half? I want to know how much he spent. Okay, because if he's in there for an hour and a half, this guy better have spent over $100. Otherwise, I'm fucking, I'm feeling like something fishy's going on. Second, I think, uh, uh who, who do we blame here? Because a six-year-old, you know, it's just a six-year-old. But I also, I know a couple six-year-old. My friend Tony, his kid is like six. And I think Renee's kid is like six. All right, they're like six years old. They know not to kill a one-year-old. Right? They know that. They know better. If anything, they would, oh, I'll slap the kid, maybe, and that'll help. You know, you know, kids don't think straight. But when a kid wraps something around another kid's throat, I feel like six years old is old enough to know when you're killing a baby. Right? And also, I thought he went to sleep. That's how a six-year-old tries to get out of trouble. I don't know. I thought he went to sleep. Okay, that's not a six-year-old making a fucking honest mistake. That's how six-year-olds get out of trouble. Um, <laughs> speaking of Tony's kid, <laughs> he uh, at some point he was at school or whatever, and he tried to steal. You know, the they had like this Christmas tree where you donate, like you donate shit, you donate gifts or whatever. And um, <laughs> I guess uh, his kid tried to steal one of the gifts. Tried to steal one of the gifts or whatever. And uh, he's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong? Why would you fucking steal a gift for, like, charity? And he goes, I thought I thought it said free. <laughs> I thought it said free. That's how a kid tries to get out of trouble. They just make up some dumb shit. Oh, I thought it said free. I didn't know. I thought that shit said free. <laughs> so that's like, that's a six-year-old. I, I was just trying to put him to sleep. I thought he went to sleep. No, motherfucker. In reality, you know what you're doing when you're stealing a Christmas present. And you know what you're doing when you're murdering a one-year-old. So... I don't know. And then on that note, if the kid really is stupid, then I blame uh, the father for not teaching your six-year-old better. I don't know. It's a sad story, but I, hmm, I don't know if this guy, okay, show of hands in the chat right now, if this guy gets arrested for something like child endangerment, um, I think I'm cool with that. I think I'm okay with that. Hour and a half. Once I saw hour and a half, I think I'm cool with that. If it would have said 20 minutes, I would say, man, this dad, he did his best. You know, he went in there. What what could possibly happen in 20 minutes? But hour and a half, that's where I draw the line on. If this guy gets arrested, I think I'm cool with that. I think I'm okay with that. Sheik Ninja. I met a methadone addict whose child was completely underdeveloped. It was sad. Still wearing diapers and shit at six. So is that, that's maybe our, okay, the meth thing may not be true. That was just me saying, how the fuck can you shop at a thrift store for an hour and a half? That's just me saying random shit. I don't want meth to influence what you guys think about this, this article. <laughs> Good news stories today. Okay, look at this. I thought this, okay, something like this happened in Las Vegas. Driver killed after concrete chunk was thrown from overpass. Something like this happened in Las Vegas, maybe... 12 years ago, probably about 12 years ago, where uh, some guy threw a big rock off an overpass and it fucked up somebody. I don't remember if it was a chick or a dude. I don't think no one died, but they got fucked up bad. Now let's read. Police in Tennessee believe someone threw a chunk of concrete from a highway overpass, killing a driver who was on his way to work. Uh, the police department says 54-year-old Joe Shelton Jr. was killed when the concrete came through his front windshield and hit him in the face. The incident happened at just before 5 a.m. Tuesday while Shelton was driving on Interstate 24 near downtown Nashville. Shelton was traveling from his home in Pleasant View to his job at a Nissan plant in Smyrna. Nissan released the following statement. We are saddened to learn of Joe's passing. Our deepest sympathies are with his family members, friends, and colleagues, 
at this difficult time. This is a big chunk. This is probably ten pound chunk of uh of brick. Investigators are now reviewing surveillance footage from cameras in the area in hopes to gather a suspect description of the person who may have been thrown. Yeah, whatever. Anyone with information can call. Yeah, dude, that is fucked. So it happened here, and it was this weird thing because they tried to make it into like a gang story. There was this weird like. It was so what a weird time it was back then. It must have been like a slow news month. There was some shit here called like Three Eleven Boys. And it was like this group of like rich white kids who like rode dirt bikes and shit and got drunk and like they got in fights at parties and then Vegas tried to turn that into a gang. Like, oh yeah, three eleven boy, that shit's gang. So if you like there was a lot of like <laughs> it became this thing where like if you were like a really square kid and, and they like some of them skated, I think too. So if you were a square kid, you'd be like, Yeah, dude, don't fuck with me. I know I know some of three eleven boys. And then like me, I've always been such a skeptic, I'm just like, dude. No one fucking cares. And one of their biggest crimes, oh, one of the one of the biggest 311 boys crimes, was they threw a fucking rock off off the overpass and fucked somebody up. So uh, that makes <laughs> that's what I thought of. That's the first thing I thought of when I clicked this. Um, super sad story though. This guy was just uh, just driving along, minding his own business, and just got fucking smashed. It's uh, <clears throat> really makes you think, like uh, like anything can happen, type shit, you know. I mean, this one's annoying because you just sit back and imagine if that was your mom or dad or brother. All you can do is say, "Why? Why did you? Why did you do that? You just wanted to kill an, a random person. What? what or like, are you hyped? Are you sad? What, like, what are you doing out there? It's crazy. I uh, remember a long time ago, me and actually, this, I'm gonna tell you guys, I did this, <laughs> not to a person to a duck and uh, or maybe a goose i think it was a goose and i was skating this spot at toys r us it was a five and a half stair handrail i was trying kickflip 50 i kept getting close and i kept not landing it and then my body got all tired and i got really fucking mad and gonzo was there and i grabbed this big fucking rock and just threw it and it wasn't an overpass it was a big 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 like a uh, like sewer drain so it was like maybe like a 20 foot drop so i threw it over this fence and then it, oh, it went over the fence and down it was probably the chunk was probably a, almost as big as this one so maybe uh i don't know five five to ten pound block and dude it fucked this goose up and i i just heard the goose get fucked and i couldn't even look i was like fuck dude i just fucked up an innocent goose because i'm fucking angry at skateboarding trick what's the point of that gonzo felt all bad about it i felt bad so basically i did this except i felt bad and, uh, thank God I didn't do that to a person. Can you imagine if I threw that shit? It was just like a bum, like a, a homeless person walking by and just smashed him. Whew. Yeah. Still feel bad about that goose. I remember Gonzo was like, yeah, I saw that goose, man. I don't know if it was dead, but it was fucked up. <laughs> I just remember him saying that shit. I was like, oh, God. Like, I'm not skating anymore. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I actually don't think I ever skated that spot again. And I bet it's still there too. It's Toys R Us on Maryland Parkway. I remember exactly where the spot was. It's fucked up. At that point, you should have just killed the goose. Well, I I would have had to like go around this thing and climb down this ladder and then just go up there and what? Fucking strangle the goose? Wrap the fucking uh, <laughs> wrap the seat belt around its neck and pretend I thought it was sleeping? <laughs> oh man, damn, that sucks. Anyways, it's a sad story. Next news article. Okay, now this is, uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm uh, not really in a great mood today. And I'll explain to you guys briefly why. Las Vegas police investigate deadly shooting in Southwest Valley. Las Vegas Metro Police were investigating a deadly shooting in the Southwest Valley on Wednesday night. According to police officers around <clears throat> 920 on November 21st, whatever, Tanae and Russell, a man in his 20s, was fatally shot at the scene. Uh... Metro said the victim was found dead in the driveway of a home. Sanford confirmed it was domestic. A verbal argument turned physical, but could not confirm the relationship between the deceased and the shooter. A man in his 50s at the scene was taken in for questioning, Sanford says, and he did not live at the home. So uh, that was my friend George. Uh, he's been on my channel multiple times. Uh, we grew up skateboarding together, and uh, we did a lot of contests together. And I posted on Instagram today some footage I had of him skating my backyard and some footage of us barbecuing. 
and he was always laughing. He was always a really cool guy. So uh, it's uh, it's really got me all like fucked up today. I can't really think right. You know, I'm trying to keep the podcast funny and shit, but that shit's really weighing on my shit right now. And we're actually not going to do a post show because we're probably going to go do some sort of uh, memorial or whatever. But uh, yeah, so that's that's crazy. And it's in the news already today. And uh, I don't know, just uh, just a crazy thing. Just like this last article, you know, everything can be cool one day, and then the next day, you know, you just you just gone, and you don't know what happened. And I have a, I don't have all the details, so I don't really want to think too much about it. You know, I've heard a couple of stories, but uh, it's not really for me to talk about. And it's just a crazy, a crazy thing, man. What a crazy, you know, crazy world, I guess. But yeah, I know the guy. Uh, he has a daughter. He, I know, I skated with his brother. He's in the video. What time? When? He's in in the video. Neat. He's in the, our old videos. And uh, I don't know. He's, he's on my YouTube channel. It's just crazy, crazy shit. We drank a lot of beers together. We uh, the the last time we skated together was in one of the clips that I posted here. But we also skated at a bar together for some weird. Uh, best trick <laughs> is that why I'm wearing all black today? No, I just happen to be wearing a pro club. So that happened. Um, and uh, we're just we're gonna try to move on with the podcast, but just sad news. Anything can happen at any time. So uh, <laughs> on that note, I shit my pants on Thanksgiving <laughs> to go from <laughs> one story to the other. I shit my fucking pants on Thanksgiving. I went out with uh, Lily and my grandpa, and it was actually really cool. It was their first time kind of hanging out, so we uh, we went to this buffet, which, by the way, guys, go to the buffet on Thanksgiving. It's the greatest thing ever. Also had this shit. If somebody can tell me what it's called, Chile, Chile Miles or something. T somebody fucking help me out. Who's Mexican in the chat? Chile. It's two words that kind of rhyme with Chile. It's Mexican food. Ch Fuck, Chile, Chile or something. It was really bomb. It was the greatest fucking Mex Mexican food I've had in a long time. I had that. Chile, Chiles. Am I saying it right? Chile, Chiles? Whatever that fucking shit was, it was bomb as fuck. So good. Thanksgiving. Where else are you going to get that shit? I don't have no Mexican parents. I'm not going to have get Chile, Chiles at anywhere else. Yeah, Castanza knows. Of course, the guy with the Hispanic sounding name. Castanza knows about Chile, Chiles. Yipa, orale. Um, so I got that, I got, tur dude, I got prime rib, let me find the picture, let me find a picture, I'm gonna tell you guys what I had for Thanksgiving, and I wanna hear what you guys did and what you guys ate, but this is gonna blow your guys' mind, or at least uh, I was really hyped on it, prime rib, turkey, tilapia, chili verde, roasted jalapenos, mac and cheese, potatoes with gravy, chilequiles, uh, green bean casserole, and more. They had turkey gravy, mushroom gravy, beef gravy. They had everything. Pizza. Oh, and the desserts. I don't eat desserts. You know, but uh, if I wanted a dessert, oh, I could have killed myself out there too. It was great. They had pasta. Lily got like Alfredo, like pasta Alfredo or whatever. It was great. Chicken Alfredo, whatever it was. So my new plan is uh, is to figure out how to make chilaquiles. But anyways, back to me shitting myself. It was great. I picked up this plate. I'm getting the chile quiles. I'm getting the prime rib. Oh, I'm getting the turkey. Oh, I got the white meat. But then I went over here and got the dark meat too. Mac and cheese. Oh, the potatoes, the gravy. Oh, I'm just feeling myself. I start to walk back to the table. And oh, I got a little poot brewing. A little fart. Just a little fart. A little sweet fart. A little sweet tart in there. A little action for the kids. You know, I'm walking back thinking, I'll just let that tiny little fart out. It ain't going to be nothing. And then I feel it. The warm liquid, fucking warm diarrhea liquid right in my pants, and it was it was terrible because I walked back to the to the chair and I'm like I set my my shit down I was like I'll be right back I gotta go to the restroom I went in there dude luckily it was a mini poop it was a little baby a little bite sized Halloween sized poop it uh it didn't touch my boxer I was wearing boxer briefs too so this would have been the great the greatest time this would have been the greatest time to uh. To shit my pants. I had boxer briefs on, so if it would have been a big shit, it would have all it would have all been stuck in there, and I could have just threw those fuckers away. Oh, also another weird story that happened. So, anyways, yeah, I go in there. It's just all liquid, weird yellow poop. It's gross. I don't know why that happened. It actually happened twice. So I did that. Wiped my ass. Got everything good. Didn't didn't touch my boxers at all. Perfect way to shit your pants. It did touch everything else though. 
Oh, my, the bottom of my balls, the sides of my ass cheeks, in between my leg. I'm all, like, it touched everything but boxer briefs. It was like, like, what would this be like? Fucking one square foot. One square foot of shit stains all over my body. So, it's, it's not good. And then my butthole was all fucking, like, hurting from how raw it was. It was, it was some weird. I don't know what it is sometimes with diarrhea. I don't know if there's, like, stomach acid in it or maybe it's. Maybe it's a combination of hot sauces I've been having. But that shit burns sometimes. Even if I'm not on some hot sauce binge, it just burns. I think it's just raw poop, you know? I think, okay, here's Dr. Steve. I'm going to give you guys my theory. I think when the poop goes through your intestines, I think it your intestines are like, hey, I'm going to wanna make this shit slippery. I'm going to make it into a weird poop shape. And I'm going to just get everything like ready to go or like prepare it for the asshole. I'm going to get it all nice. I'm going to take off all the spices and get it going. But I think what happened... Because my shit just 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 slipped right through the intestines, shit right out of my asshole. Oh, it, it, they didn't have time to despice it. I don't know if that's true. If anyone's a doctor, let me know if that's a real thing. But yeah, it was it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Sharky Genius says I was cooking for twelve hours yesterday. Made two whole dinners, one for my house and one for my dad's with all my siblings. That's nice. Let me know what else you guys did on Halloween. Anyways. On Halloween, excuse me, on Thanksgiving. Fuck, I'm retarded. Um, so the second time I had to do a liquid shit was actually after I was finished with my first plate. And I was like, you know what? Uh, my stomach's fucked up. I'll be right back. I didn't tell anyone I shit my pants until after we were going home. But uh, so anyways, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I'm in there, dude. The, I, mm, I almost took a picture. It made no sense. Okay, I sat down on the toilet. Picture this, guys. I'm going to try to paint the picture of how weird this was. I sat down on the toilet. And to my right, there's this metal box with toilet paper. Two different rolls. So I'm getting my toilet paper. Everything's cool. There's plenty of toilet paper. Anyways, I'm sitting there. Little metal box to my right. And the metal box starts making noise. -da -da -da. I'm thinking, oh, maybe somebody next to me is shitting too. Maybe, they're, maybe their shit's on the left. My, mine's on the right. You know, we're sitting in a stall. You know, I'm sitting there facing the door. And, uh... This thing shakes and it like, like a key turns and then the shit just pops off the wall. There's a person in there who all he has to do is just lean down. He can see me just shitting it all, dick hanging out and everything. See me through this hole which holds this toilet paper dispenser. So suddenly there's this glory hole. This It's about a one foot by one foot of a hole that holds toilet paper. And now I'm just exposed. I didn't care because I was on Instagram. I was, you know... Just looking at Instagram shit. And I just tried not to look over there. Worst case scenario, we, we make eye contact. I got... I got this weird liquid shit coming out of my ass. You can probably hear it dripping, dripping out of my ass. And then I got this guy next to me. He has the key to the fucking city, opens the, the side of this weird little wind poop window. And I've never seen that before in my life. And I'm, here's the thing that confused me. I'm dead fucking serious. Here's what confused me. I'm looking to my right thinking, oh, like, what? how is this here? And how did this guy get from, how, why is this here? And then I look to my left thinking, oh, maybe there's one in every stall. There's nothing to my left. I'm, this is only for my stall that has this weird back fucking door entrance. So you would think that since they're all in a row, it's a big bathroom. It was a casino. So there's like 10, 10 stalls. There's 10 stalls. So you would think each one would have that window. But for some weird reason, mine didn't have, only, he could get in on my right side. But I looked to my left thinking, oh, maybe, maybe they just, they keep going in a row. They don't. Only mine had the weird window. And it was a one way. So I was also like I was trying to figure it out. I was like, oh, maybe he's he's changing the toilet paper on this side. Maybe while you know, while he's here, he'll just change both. I look in there, it's only for my side. So and then he just closes it, locks it up, and it gets all back to normal. But how is that how is that a thing? You understand why I was confused, right? Am I explaining this right? If you if there's a window on this side. If he's, if he's to my right, if he's on to the right and he's able to get into the left side, why wouldn't they all do that in a row? Why wouldn't each of them do that in a row? I, I'm going to go back. Uh, was at the Santa Fe station. I'm going to go back and try to fucking take a picture because it doesn't make any sense to me. Like it was, it, it was convenient. If I was out of toilet paper, that would have been super convenient because he just goes in there and just fucking, oh, here you go. Here, buddy. I'm good. Like. I don't know. It was, it was a big hole, though. It wasn't like he just, like, put some shit in a slot and it just dropped down like some weird fucking drive through bank Wells Fargo shit. It wasn't like that. It was like whole window came off of the fucking shit. Boom. Yeah. It didn't make me feel uncomfortable. It just made me confused.
as to how that happened. Speaking of blowing up the bathroom, I uh, I saw Wreck It Ralph the other day. Wreck It Ralph uh, animated thing, not the new one where he breaks the internet. But if you guys haven't seen that movie, I had heard nothing about it. I knew nothing about Wreck It Ralph at all, and it came on cable the other day. I watched Wreck It Ralph, and it was great, really good, really good movie. Loved it. Uh, I can't wait to watch the second one now. Um, I also found out that it's based off of a real game, so probably when I have a free moment, which I never have a free moment, I'm going to, uh, download an NES emulator, find that game, it's called Fix-It Felix or something like that, it's not called Wreck-It Ralph, it's called Fix-It Felix, or Felix Fixes It, or Fix-It Felix Jr., something weird like that, and, uh, I'm gonna play that shit on stream, so if you guys aren't following me on Twitch, make sure you do that shit immediately. Uh, got a question for you guys. Um, Black Friday deals. Anyone got any good Black Friday deals they want to push towards me? Or maybe Cyber Monday deals? Uh, let me know either on Facebook or on Discord. Discord is a great one. You guys can type in exclamation Discord to find my link in the Twitch chat. So, uh, let me know any good Black Friday deals. I don't need a TV, but everything else I'm just kind of like looking for. By the way, guys, I lost a $100 bill last night. And it's really upsetting me. And I'm pretty sure I know exactly what I did. So in my wallet, I put all my bills in order from big to small. And I never have 100. I almost never have a $100 bill because just I never have it. So my shit is in order from big to small, you know? And usually it goes 20, 20, 20, 20, 10, 555, five, five, one, 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 right? Something like that. Maybe I got 60, 70 bucks on me. So this time I had a $100 bill up there. So I'm pretty sure what I did, and I remember this, uh, I walked out the bar and they said, uh, I said, what's, what do I owe you? She said, 13 bucks, $13. So I reached into my wallet, pulled out a bill, handed it and said, I'm good. Keep it. And I'm pretty sure, like I was hoping to give a $7 tip, $13 tab, giving you a $7 tip. But I think I may have accidentally given her a $93 tip or, or whatever the fucking math is. I think I might've done that. And that's. Really upsetting to me, but you know what? It's Thanksgiving. I'm trying not to be sad about it, but it's, I hate losing money. I hate it so fucking much. And I don't want to be that dick because I have the chick's number. I could text her and be like, Hey, uh, did I give you like a, an enormous tip last night? But I don't want to do that. I don't even care. I don't even care. Whatever. Chic Ninja discord is where you suggest games. Discord is like a chat room for only my viewers. Um, we'll do trivia, and then that'll be the end of the show today. I actually thought it would be a very short show, but it was pretty, uh, pretty long show today. So, who was the first person to ollie down Wallenberg? Wallenberg's this big, uh, four block. One, two, three, four. I think, uh, Shane O'Neill and Ollie back healed it. This guy, Danny Gonzalez, kick flip melloned it. Chris Cole did tray flip down it. It took him, like, 5,000 tries, which is crazy to me. Because, uh... Usually, you would think if you're going to jump down something so huge, you can only get a couple tries. Sammy Boy is the winner, Mark Gonzalez. And uh, Jaunt was a little too slow. Too slow. Sammy Boy, as long as you are in the U.S. of A, uh, just get at me on Discord or Facebook. I prefer Facebook, but I'll take either one. Let me know you're the winner, and I will get you a sticker pack. Free sticker pack. Free Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack for the trivia winner. The stickers look like this. They're pretty cool. One last thing I want to push by you guys, push by you guys, is uh, I'm considering possibly bringing back the Scooters Are Gay skateboard deck. We're going to change it a little bit, but uh, I want to know your guys' thoughts. You don't have to tell me right now. Maybe you can let me know in a YouTube comment or in Discord or whatever, but it's going to cost me quite a bit of money to get these out, and I want to know if anyone personally will buy them. And, uh, yeah, it's, scooters are gay. You know, a lot of people say they're going to buy that shit, and then they think, oh, fuck, what if I'm at the skate park and a scooter looks at me and confronts me? And it's just like, oh, dude, just say it's a fucking funny skateboard. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, I want to know uh, if you guys might do that. Lish, Lish, do you ship worldwide? Yes, I ship worldwide. Stickers, yes, I do sell the stickers. I think they're like $4 or $3. I don't remember what they are. You can find them on cakemuscle.com. Uh, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, uh, my Instagram is BlackNinjaLV. If you guys are new around here, um, I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NinjaLifestyle. 
I want to thank everyone for being here, and I would like everyone in the chat to give me a hell yeah so that I can shout everybody out on the way out of this podcast. Again, I appreciate you guys for being here. If you showed up late, don't worry. This podcast will be on iTunes and YouTube and Podbean on Sunday morning. So if you guys missed the beginning, tune in Sunday. You can catch everything you missed. Lish Lish, Sheik Ninja, Jaunt, Butt Spot, TJ, Sharky Genie, Sammy Boy, Sheik Ninja, Zoltan, and more. Again, very real reality, Jaunt, appreciate you guys. Jake Gunther, good thing you guys were hanging out. That's all I got for you guys today. Uh, be safe this weekend. Don't drink too much, but don't drink too little. And uh, now it's Thanksgiving. Appreciate everything you got. And uh, if you got it to give, fucking give it. And pray for me and my $100 bill because that shit hurts my soul. And uh, I don't know. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Yeah, that's it, motherfuckers. Let's go ahead and play that intro. So yeah, I fucking put the seatbelt around its neck and cracked the neck shut, and I just thought it was sleeping. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs>